so much for having me. I am excited to be talking to you today about how to grow 27% faster through sales and marketing alignment. My name is Jim Gilkey, and I'm going to start with the story. I had a buddy in high school, fellow drummer, we'll call him Max. Now, Max was a legend. Max would walk around the cafeteria at lunch and ask the first girl that he saw if she would go on a date with him. When she inevitably said no, he would just turn to the girl next to her and ask her if she would go on a date with him. And this process would continue until he ended up with a date. As you can imagine, Max heard no a lot. But as you can also imagine, Max went on a lot of dates. Max was not in the 72%. Now, what is the 72%? Any guesses? 72% of sales professionals don't expect to hit their annual quota this year. Now, Max was able to grind through a lot of no's to get to his yes. There are some salespeople that are willing to also grind, but are we making this easier for them or are we making this more difficult? So who am I and why can I talk about this? I have worked in sales development over at Salesforce I had a director of marketing role in my last job where I launched ABM and we had over a thousand percent return on investment, so much so that I reached out to Terminus and asked if I could work here to sell this platform that worked so well for me. And I also launched a show on LinkedIn and podcast called Account Based Beverages, where I try to grab the brightest minds in B2B marketing and interview them in six minute episodes, talk about their favorite drink and give you something actionable that you can take away each week. But I am here speaking because only 47% of marketers feel like their ABM strategy is effective. Marketers are like this man. Water is seeping into his boat. And it's like marketers where the gap continues to grow between their actual numbers and their goals. Now, this man bailing water out of his boat to try to stay afloat It's kind of like marketing, throwing anything they can over the wall to the sales department to try to get them to close, to get us closer to our revenue goal. The problem is the leads aren't closing. So with this man, will bailing water continuously solve the problem of the hole in his boat? Or does he need to go directly to that hole and try to fix it? Now, in today's economy, deals are so hard to come by that we can't afford to let anything slip. We have to win every single deal that we can. And when you get a prospect to the table with the salesperson, what do you do now? Now, unless you're on a reality show like this one, which I cannot believe is a real thing, you aren't going to ask for the business the moment a demo request comes in. You're not going to marry somebody that you first meet. You're going to have to get to know them first, and they're going to have to get to know you. And as this super sophisticated graph shows, the further you get through the funnel, the more conversations that you have, the more confident you feel about a company's fit to be able to work with you, the problems that you're able to solve, and what is meaningful to them in getting this across the line. So there's three simple ways that you can impact your revenue today. Now, in order to make this a little easier for you to remember, let's just come up with an acronym because that's what we do in marketing, right? P.S. S. You want to personalize the message. You want to share insights between teams and you want to have a single source of truth. So with personalization, yes, this is how ABM might work for some companies. There are companies out there that spend $20,000 just on a research report about one company and a few buyers. And then they'll spend $100,000 setting up an experience for their buyer who loves golf to play a round of golf with a PGA member. But that's not all of us. And we sure are not talking about this. Something that was novel 15 years ago, can we just agree that this no longer cuts through the noise? Now today I'm proposing two ways that you can personalize your message. One is by personalizing the message based off of the stage of the sales cycle. Just like a triathlon has three stages, You don't need the same tools when you're in the water as when you're running. The other way is to personalize based off of persona. Let's be honest, your CEO does not understand all the marketing acronyms. And while some people view the world through pictures, 
Others view it through ones and zeros. So starting with the first, when you personalize by stage, consider the tools needed to move from one stage to the next stage. Different messages are going to be needed, just like the bike would be needed in the second stage of a triathlon, but it's not needed for the first or the third. You can see in this, early on in this example, all of the content is around teaching and education. Then you get a little bit more specific as you start to understand and unlock in conversations what specifically is interesting to a prospect. And then when you move toward the end of the sales cycle, you get into case studies, hard ROI numbers, and third-party validation to help make your point. Now, this idea of personalizing also applies before you get into conversation with sales. So when I was running ABM, this was my mantra. For every step I take, the prospect also needs to take a step. You onboarded a new technology that now makes you a fit, or you grew to a size that now makes you a fit, that's good. I will now unlock marketing budget to start to target you because you are in our ICP. When you begin researching a pain that our company solves or a competitor of ours, it's even better. I will unlock more marketing budget to start to target you with those messages on the topics that you're doing research. Or if you engage on one of our own properties like our website, perfect. Now I will open up even more budget so I can reach you on the higher cost of entry channels. The second is to personalize by buyer persona. If you don't use the right words that your buyer speaks, you're lost. Now Lever does this extremely well. An HR rep knows that ATS stands for applicant tracking system, but the CFO doesn't. And IT ops just wants to see the charts and graphs to help make the decision. So how does this work? As you set up campaigns, begin to select your accounts based off of static and dynamic filters. There are tech platforms that will allow you to automate adding people or removing them from campaigns, but you can certainly do this manually. How do you start to mirror some of the messaging that they're already consuming in a way that marketing can attack them through advertising or other channels, and sales can attack them through providing resources in the conversations that you're having? But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about the foundation here. So there's a book, Fierce Conversations, that has a really, really great metaphor that I like to use. You imagine a company is a beach ball and each department within the company is like a different color on that beach ball. Now, if you're one millimeter tall and you're in the middle of the orange section, every direction you look, you're only gonna see orange. When you come to a meeting with the entire exec team, you're going to solve the problem in a way that the orange data tells you the problem should be solved. Your issue is that other departments come seeing the world in blue, seeing the world in pink. And for you to come to a conclusion when you're all working off an incomplete set of data is going to be very difficult. So how do we share data? Sales will gather data through trial and error in reaching out and through listening in sales conversations. Marketing has access to a lot of data that will show where and what gets prospects to respond or engage with our messaging. Now, what data should we know? Top five opportunity sources is gonna unlock where we need to go to be able to reach more prospects. When you start to listen to conversations with salespeople and understand those frequently asked questions, that will allow you to create content you know is going to be a big hit because you will start to answer questions before other companies are even asking them. When you understand the buying committee, this allows you to shorten the sales cycle. If I know that someone in IT needs to sign off on this and they always join after the evaluation stage, then when we're in the evaluation stage, I'm going to start to target them so that when they get that calendar invite, they're not wondering what my brand is or what my company does. They already understand because I've been speaking their language at the right time in the sales cycle. And then when you understand the top five closed one reasons, this allows you to close more deals. 
This shows you the code, the secret sauce, the formula for being able to get deals across the line. And the important piece of this, in today's economy, it is vital to understand what the business case that your champion is trying to make to get budget sign off. What is the one metric or KPI that they're trying to influence? And by how much do they need to influence to be able to justify buying from you? Because there's no point in being the vendor of choice if budget doesn't get approved. The last piece in this section, I want to talk about why 70%, 70% of content is going unused by salespeople. The answer is friction. So when you're enabling sales, you need to be answering those basic questions. Why have we created this asset? When and where should this be used? And what is the trigger that sales needs to hear or look for in the conversation to know to leverage this asset? Because without the enablement, there's too much for the salesperson to go out and try it and find. And they don't want to have to teach themselves what each and every piece of content was created for or how this might resonate to somebody when they've not been a customer before. They've only sat on the one side of the table selling. So we have the data sitting in front of us, the desired personalization on the other side. And now this seems like a chasm as great as the Grand Canyon. And how are we going to cross that to move from the data to be able to personalize? The answer is through a single source of truth. Have you ever played this game? This is called Space Team, and it is dubbed by the creators as a cooperative shouting game for mobile devices. Here's how it works. Everyone playing is on the same team. You're driving a spaceship. Everyone has a section of the control panel that they are in control of. And directions will pop up to help you move this spaceship faster to get away from imminent danger. But as you can see in this graphic, most of the directions don't apply to your section of the control panel. So you are constantly shouting out these silly names and whether somebody turns a dial or presses a button or flips a switch. And if you don't do it in time, then you lose as a team and your control panel starts to break apart as you see in the middle. How often do we in marketing and sales play this same game? We're working with an incomplete set of data. We don't know where to go to find the answers. We see terms or acronyms that we have never seen before. And now we're trying to make decisions for the viability of our business and bringing in more sales. So how bad is this? Let's look at Revenue Marketing Alliance's state of revenue marketing in 2022 for this next quiz. 40%, what do you think it means? 40% of marketers surveyed claim that their systems are not optimized for alignment. And when you add on, 10% of respondents said that data is not even being shared across their teams. So where should the data live? You're going to have different sources. You could have call recording software. You could have notes that people are uploading into a CRM. You can also on the quantitative side have marketing automation and responses, ABM or attribution software pulling in any kind of engagement from these accounts. But where this shouldn't live is in somebody's notebook, in a tool that only one person or one team can access. In my personal opinion, and for any of you that's a Lord of the Rings fan, the one ring to rule them all is your CRM. Everything needs to go to the CRM. These are built to integrate with multiple systems. They're built for multiple teams to be able to access and to make decisions based off of the data. So when you know an account is researching, it's not because you went and logged into some super niche software you and one other person have access to. It is because that populates a field that is calculated in a score that will pop up on the account page for everyone to see. Here's just a few examples of things that you can start to take into account to be able to take action on as people start to engage with research online, 
engage on your website, if they've had conversations with your team in the past, building all of these in a formula into a score allows you to then activate new campaigns when they hit certain thresholds. And also having a time-bound factor on all of these is super important when you're talking about engagement. Because somebody engaging three years ago is not the same as somebody engaging today. If you want sales to take action, if you want marketing to take action, it has to be accessible. Accessible equals actionable. So in this example, you can see that in a single source of truth, we saw a signal that a certain individual was researching a product. In this case, you see here, it was a chat solution. We are going to have marketing reach out with ads across all websites that they'll be on. We'll have sales reach out in an email because they've had conversations and they have that relationship and that channel opened, but we can have marketing even put a banner in the bottom of the email. And when we drive them to the website, we auto-populate this chat bot to have the solution that they've been researching. And we are starting to bring these different pieces together to make a cohesive strategy that has the customer at the center of it. When you don't have a single source of truth, some people don't receive the data while others receive it late. AT&T had this amazing Super Bowl commercial a few years ago that's just stuck with me. An employee calls out his coworkers for not inviting him to a taco party. This employee makes a huge scene even calling out his friend for inviting someone that neither of them even like. Only then does he receive the invite, which was some reason delayed, and now he sheepishly has to apologize to everybody. Now, there are probably another five things that I could add to this list, but in order to keep this short enough and easy for you to remember and take action on, I leave you with PSS. You want to be personalized. You want to share information and have that all housed in a single source of truth. And when you can do this, aligned sales and marketing teams have 24% faster growth rates and 27% faster profit growth. This, my friends, is 100% in your control. Thank you so much. If you'd love to continue the conversation, send me a LinkedIn request. You can search Jim Gilkey on LinkedIn or scan the QR code. And I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me at the Demand Generation Summit. Thank you. Mm -hmm.